Hello and welcome to this part of the FAST tutorial series. In today's video we will be discussing how we can perform division detection using FAST. So in today's video we're going to be using um, a data set which is uh, the same as we were using in the previous video which was track correction and validation. So in this data set you can see that we have these two bacterial cells that undergo repeated division events uh, and end up generating this large microcolony. And so the goal of division detection is essentially to assign each of the cells in this final microcolony to one of these two mother cells at the, in the initial time point. Essentially you want to create a lineage um, of each of the descendants of this, these two mother cells. So to do that we just open up the division detection GUI and when we do that, you can see that this looks very similar to the tracking uh, module, which is no coincidence because the modules um, are based on very similar algorithms. So again, we have this um, stage where we perform training of a model, and then we have a, a detection stage where we actually perform the main division detection, which uses the information from the training stage to optimally integrate information from across many different features. However, there are three main differences between the division detection module and the tracking module. Firstly, we break the assumption that objects remain static in um, feature space, or at least close to static. Instead, we assume that there is a large but predictable change in displacement space as we go from the mother to the two daughter cells. For example, the length of the cell decreases in half while the position of the two daughter cells can be predicted from the length of the mother and its orientation. So in the training stage, what we do is we take this initial model and then we refine it based on the actual data. The second difference is that we pool all division events into a single data set rather than separating by time. Although this sounds like it should take quite a long time to perform um, validation on, because division events are much sparser than the original tracking data, uh, you can actually perform tracking uh, over a relatively short period of time. And so we'll be performing all of our validation on the entire data set rather than on two different data points as we were doing in the previous GUI. The third difference is that we introduce a new variable, which is the distance in time between the end of the maternal track and the start of the daughter track. This allows us to account for those occasions which we saw in the previous video where the mother cell um, track overlaps somewhat with that of the daughters. So to begin we want to perform this training uh, of the model and usually what I do is I just use this positional feature. As I say, division events are much sparser than the original tracking data and so we tend to be able to just use this position um, information instead of integrating lots of different features together. And that's just going to make life easier in subsequent steps. It provides us with less things that we need to worry about. Um, so I'll just click Calculate. And you can see that we get this unnormalized step size distribution, which looks very similar to that that we saw in the previous GUI. We also have this trackability score, uh, which isn't very useful by itself. Um, instead, we're going to be relying more on these other windows for our validation of the division detection. So we'll now perform the main division detection stage. Uh, we'll just use the default settings for this. I'll click find divisions um, and you can see that we have these two different windows that have now uh, changed. We have this division viewer window which allows us to view individual division events as they've been detected. To use this uh, we start off with um, a kind of mother time point and here you can see that we have the mother cell marked in yellow and then we click toggle AB similar to in the tracking GUI uh, and we can see that we have these two daughter cells which have been assigned to that mother marked out in purple. And so you can see that this indicates that we have accurate um, assignment of uh, the di this division event between this mother and the two different daughters. We can also move to other division events that have been detected um, in this case, you can see that we've moved to the other cell at this time point. But here you can see, rather than both daughters being um, assigned to, only a single daughter has been assigned to. 
And so what this is telling us is that we probably need to reduce the stringency of the division detection threshold to increase this number here. We can also look at this, which is the lineage distribution. Uh, this tells us the number of lineages that are of the, a particular size, so how many tracks are within each lineage. And you can see at the moment that the majority of our lineages are contain a single track. So this is telling us that, again, we probably have too stringent um, a threshold at the moment. And finally, we can look at the normalized displacement space window. Here I've used the, this time difference um, feature that I mentioned before, just to show you how that ends up looking when we look at the normalized displacement space. And you can see that our detection threshold is eliminating a lot of these points, which we probably want to be including. This is probably why our um, division detection is failing at the moment. So to get around this, I will just increase our detection threshold. I'll bring this up to 0.6 and click Find Divisions. And you can see now that we have this warning appear, which is telling us that we've raised that detection threshold too high. And what's happened is that we now have a mother that is assigned as its own daughter. So to get around this problem, we just need to bring that detection threshold down a little bit further. So a compromise between those two different forces, we want to avoid these circular lineages we want to have it high enough that we actually get reasonable lineages to be reconstructed. So now I've set that as 0.5, I will click Find Divisions, and you can see that this already looks much better. So firstly we can check that this initial cell is still correct, which it is. We can click Next Division and see the one that was problematic before is also fixed. We can also see in our lineage size distribution that we have only a single lineage which is of size 1 and we have these two large lineages um, at the tail end of the distribution and these are probably the two lineages associated with that initial, those two initial mother cells. Um, if we want to cut out these small lineages we can also increase this parameter here and this will cut out everything to the left of the red line. So we'll just close this down. You do need to close this window in order to save your work. Um, it will just do a little bit of processing. And then just to make sure that we actually have uh, performed our division detection accurately, I'll give you a sneak preview uh, of another part of FAST, the overlays module. And this allows you to overlay data that you've extracted in earlier stages on your original data set. So in this case, we have the bright field data or uh, phase contrast as it might be. Uh, and we're just going to select tracks as the overlay type and we'll also select lineage trees in the information overlaid. And if we now move to a late time point, say in this case 172, close to the end of the entire data set, it will now perform a reconstruction where it shows you all of these division events occurring at once. And so you can see here that we have our initial two mother cells marked out in blue. These undergo divisions repeatedly, so we go from 4 to 8 to 16 to 32 and finally to 64 in the dark red. Uh, and you can see that these thick lines represent the divisions that have been detected. And so you have this mother cell coming in and then these two daughter cells coming out of each of these division events. And so this all looks good. Um, you can also move backwards in time and just make sure that earlier tracking events maybe are accurate before it gets to this quite spaghetti stage at later time points. Um, and we'll be seeing in the next video how we can turn this kind of visualization into a video um, in more order to make uh, validation much more accurate. So yes, looking forward to seeing you uh, when we come back to this overlays module in the next video. Thank you.